So we're talking about synchronizing um, some lighting cues uh, set up in the show with an audio cue. So basically what we're going to do is use this program over here, which is Show Control. The Show Control program excels at playing back audio files, but it can also send out various types of signals like MIDI and OSC. So we're going to use the Show Control program to play back the audio and then send a MIDI signal over to QLC Plus to actually start our lighting sequence. Before we do that, there's a, two pieces of software that you're going to need. Um, you're going to need the Show Control program, which I'm using here. Now, typically I use a program called CSC Show Control, but that will cost about $150. This is a, uh, another program called Multiplay. Uh, Multiplay version 2550, I believe, <clears throat> was out years and years ago, and then it kind of fell by the wayside because people were not developing it to keep up with the current versions of Windows. But then suddenly in the last year or so, another group has picked it up and started improving it and updating it so that it can be used with Windows 10 and Windows 11. So it does a great job of playing back audio and also being able to send MIDI signals, which is exactly what we wanted to do. Uh, so we'll need that program. And if you open up your browser, and I'll put a link to this below, It'll open up this page here. You're going to want to click on News and Releases and Latest Version with Download Links. And that will take you to the correct page. And if you look down here, it'll say, this, at least as of this video, it's January 26, 2024. And it'll say here that if you're looking for the download, you can download it here. Click here and then that will download the program to your computer. Download it to your desktop. The other piece of software you're going to need is in order for us to communicate from this program to this program on the same computer, we need a virtual MIDI cable so that we can send MIDI signals from this program over to this program on the same computer. So we call that a virtual MIDI cable. The program that you'll need for that is called Loop B1. Uh, again, I'll put a link down below. And if you look, uh, it'll open up this page for you. When you find the link, this page will open. If you go to the download page here and scroll down to the bottom, loop B1, download your free copy, and you can uh, download it there. They have some more sophisticated versions of it with more channels that you can download, but you just really simply need the loop B1 to make things work. All right, then I would suggest installing the loop B1 first. Once you get that installed, and then you do a restart of your computer, you'll notice down here in the tray that you'll see what looks like a kind of a little virtual MIDI connection. And it'll say Loop B1 internal MIDI port 1.6 and the name of the company and OK. Occasionally, if you mess things up and you have what we call MIDI feedback, this may go on mute. So if you're having issues with doesn't seem like MIDI signals are being sent, Double check here and make sure that this mute box is not check marked. If you've done something that's caused that to automatically mute, make sure you fix whatever you did to cause it to mute and then make sure that that is unmute. Normally it's in an unmuted situation, so you wouldn't have that issue. The multiplay will download into a folder and uh, you extract it. Uh, it doesn't need any installing. You can actually run it from the folder. So one of the cool things about that multiplayer program, you can, you can actually put the folder on a thumb drive and actually run it from the thumb drive if you want, if you want to take it with you. Um, the only thing is if you have audio files and that kind of thing going with it, you got to make sure you take them with you. There's, uh, I'm going to do a whole series of tutorials on multiplay and probably CSC1, Show Control 1 as uh, Show Control, so in the future one, but just to get into the nitty gritty here very, very quickly. So, um, so here's our Show Control program. Uh, first of all, we need an audio file, and that's very easy here. I'm just going to grab this and drop it here. And it's going to start looking for some audio programs. I've already navigated to this folder where I have the file that I want to use, the cinematic wave file, and say open it. So it installs it there, and we're ready to go. So then all I have to do then is play this back. So if I click on here, I can play back my audio file.
Okay, you get the idea. So it's pretty simple to use. You just highlight the track, hit go, and it'll play back the audio. Now the next thing we need to do is we need to send a MIDI signal, and we're gonna send a MIDI note on off signal over to QLC Plus. We're gonna use it to actually push this button, which is connected to the function, which is gonna play back the lighting sequence that you've created. So again, I'm gonna take my MIDI signal here, and insert MIDI cue, just drag it down and put the MIDI cue here, drop it in. Now, it's going to come up with an X here, which is telling you that there's something wrong, that this isn't ready to go, we've got to make some corrections. So, go up here to File, go to Production Properties, <coughs> select MIDI. We need to select what kind of MIDI device we're going to use. So, I'm going to click Add a Device. And it just labels it new MIDI patch. You could relabel this with any name that you want. I'm just going to leave it there. I'm going to click over here for MIDI device. And I'm going to select a Loop B internal MIDI as my device. Don't forget to click Enabled. That's important. And then don't forget to also click Accept. So now that is ready to go. Now, it's still showing an X because we have to put some MIDI commands in. So again, I'm going to highlight this. I can right click it and select Q properties or I can double click it and the Q properties windows will open up. Um, I'm going to select here MIDI messages. So I'm going to send a note on and a note off command. So first thing I want to do is click insert and it automatically comes up with a note on. We're going to leave this at a channel one. There's 16 different MIDI channels. Data one is any number from zero to 127. This is the actual musical note that's being played. So I'm just going to put in anything here. I'm going to put in 40. I don't, I don't even know what note that is. It really doesn't matter. Data 2 is the how loudly that note is being played or how hard I struck the key on the keyboard because we're dealing with MIDI. So I'm going to put in anything from 1 to 127. So I'm going to just put in something middle of the road like 64. Okay. So I have a note on command, it's note number 40, and it's played at a velocity of 64 or a volume level of 64. Now, I've got to also put in a note off command to make this work properly. Before I do that, I'm going to click on interval. I would want the note on command to be sent to QLC, and then a half of a second later, 0.5 seconds later, I want it to send the note off command. If you don't do that, it won't accept another note on command when you do that. You need to turn the note on command and then note off. So now I'll insert again, and I'm gonna leave this at note on. I'm gonna set this at the same note because I need to do that because I wanna turn that note off that I just turned on, and then just leave this value at zero. Uh, there's two ways to do a note off command. You can do a note on command with an intensity of zero or you can do a note off command. So we're just gonna do another note on command for the same note and leave this set at zero. That's all we need. Just click on accept and notice now that this is set and ready to go that the X is gone. So one other thing we need to do, I'm gonna go back to my first track here. I'm gonna double click on it. And in Q properties, uh, the start advance means that the Q is gonna start and then it'll be ready to play the next cue, but it won't play the next cue until I hit the go button. So I actually want it to play the sound and send the MIDI indication at the same time. So I'm gonna change this command to start play and click accept. So now it's gonna play my audio cue and at the same time, it's gonna also start this MIDI cue. So highlight this track, if I click go, you see that it's bounced down to the bottom here. So it, it played the audio cue, and at the same time, it also played the MIDI cue. All right, now let's go over and take a look at the QLC part of it that we need to do. I'm gonna go over the QLC. Let me just open this up full window for a moment. Make sure that we have a couple things set up properly. Inputs and outputs. I wanna select a Loop B internal MIDI. My input signal is gonna be coming from a Loop B internal MIDI, so I wanna make sure that that is checked. As far as profile, I don't need any type of profile. We, we could do this very simply without a profile, so it's not necessary. Output would be whatever device that you're using to output your DMX signals to your lights to, okay? Let me just show you what I've done here. I've got four regular dimmers, just incandescent lights, and then four RGB 
color lights that I have just for this demonstration here. I've gone in and created some scenes, red, green, blue, blackouts. I've also done some lighting with my incandescence here. I have some combos going on and I have the show. Now let's bounce over to the show for a minute. So here's my red light. I have red, green, blue lights. And then here's my incandescent lights that I'm turning off and on. So I have my sequence and I can rewind to the beginning of this, bring up my DMX display or my fixture monitor here. I play a little bit of this. You can see what lights I have coming on. So you can see my red ones come on and my green ones come on and my blues. Now I have red coming on with the incandescence at 25%, so on and so forth. So I've got all my cues lined up and set up with the timing that I want so that they match the timing of the audio cue. So I've got this all ready to go. Now it's very simple. Over to my virtual console, I put in a blue frame, not a solo frame. Make sure you put in an independent frame for this button. Do not put the button in a solo frame because it will not work properly. Put it in a blue frame, which is independent. I put my button in. I called the button sync demo one. I'm going to double click to assign this button. And what I did was I assigned it to this show, which is called sync demo one. It's assigned to that and then clicked OK. So I've assigned that button so that when we press this button, it's basically going to play back my show. Now, one other thing we have to do, we have to get this button assigned to understand or be able to read that MIDI connection that's going to be sent from the show control software. And that's fairly easy to do too. As long as we've got our inputs and outputs selected correctly, I'm going to go over here and I'm going to select just my MIDI channel and that's ready to send that MIDI signal. Okay. And now I'm going to double click on my button here. I'm going to say auto detect. In other words, listen, I'm going to send you a MIDI signal. Listen for it. I click auto detect. It's waiting for me to send the MIDI signal. I click go. Notice that all of a sudden we have a number in here that it detected something. So it has detected that and I can click OK. I can verify that this is actually working by doing that again. This time I'll go in run mode, turn everything on. Now if I send this MIDI signal, it should push this button up here. All right, it worked. You see the button went green, so it did understand that MIDI signal. So basically, we're all ready to go now. I'm going to stop that from playing back. All right, I highlight my audio track. Everything's ready to go. Let me just bring up my fixture monitor here so that we can make sure that everything looks like it's synchronized to the music and run mode and here we go. And as you can see, the lights are synchronized to the hits in the music. All right, then you just continue to do the same thing and get everything synced up the way that you want it to be done. Uh, hopefully that should work for you. Now, one word that I'll put in with you here, I usually do my synchronizing a little bit differently. And I, I think I have some videos up that I can give you a link to, but it's a little bit more complex, but here's the reason I do mine a little differently. So you've done your lighting control up here in the show part of the program. The issue that I run into is that if I don't have the end of this queue go right up to the beginning of this queue, I'll actually have some dropout. And or if I extend the end of this queue too far, the DMX signals are going to bleed in here and possibly give me an undes uh, undesired effect. So it makes this a little bit complex. And what I've actually done with my audio track is I put it in a program uh, where I can look at the exact timing. <laughs> I just use Audacity and then I put the seconds up the top. I will then write down the exact timing in minutes, seconds, milliseconds, where I would like that lighting cue to uh, hit. And I just do the old fashioned way, write them down on the tablet. Then when I set up my show here, 
if you select this and then you click on this timing clock, you'll notice that start time, this first cue for me starts at 1 second and 421 milliseconds. The problem is duration, I'm left to kind of guess at the duration of when that cue, because I know my next cue here is going to start at 3 seconds and 984 milliseconds. So one way I can do this is I can take my 3 seconds and 984 milliseconds and subtract 1 second and 421 milliseconds and that will give me my duration. So that's one way to do it. The other way is to kind of you know, look at this and use the clock, use the dial here. Now I'm going to spin this dial and here's an important note too. Make sure when you select a new part of your show here, make sure to close this dial up. Because notice that this dial says 1 minute 421 milliseconds. I'm going to select this. It didn't change. These dials are still reflecting the timing for this particular cue, not this one. And that confuses a lot of people. So make sure you close this. Select your item. Open this and then close it and select your next item, open the timing box and then close it. It's just a little kind of a glitch that they have with the program and sometimes it can mess, mess you up when you're trying to do things. Well, let me just show you an example real quick. Let's say I don't get the timing quite right for this. I'm going to open my clock. I'm going to end the queue to soon and you can see that in the example here. Now when I run this, you're going to see a problem because there'll be a moment when the lights lights totally go out and then the new cue comes in. So I kind of have like a blackout in the middle of it. So you see the reds come on and they go off for a minute and then the greens pop in. So there's like a brief moment in there where they went off. Again, you can kind of play around with it with the dials and try to fix it. It's a little bit aggravating. I think I'm going to put a request in the form that we can not only put in a start time for this but a end time so that it's easier to line up with this. Uh, vice versa too, while I have this up there, I'm going to take my red cue, I'm going to purposely extend it too far. So let me see, let me add to the timing here, I'm going to purposely extend it too far. So now you can see it's overlapping into the next cue here. So this is supposed to be green, but since my red is not going off on time, my green and red is going to combine to make yellow. So you're going to see red and then yellow and then green because I've got this overlapping. So let's just do that for a moment and show you that what happens with that. So there's my red and here comes the overlap, yellow and then green. All right. That is my problem with using this part of the program because it's very, very touchy. You must line up your ends or else you'll either get a lights out situation or you get DMX signals that are bleeding over into the other one and you get unintended consequences. So I don't know if you're aware of that or not. Maybe you are because you've used this before to program lighting, but it can be a little bit touchy. Um, the way that I actually do it is I put my cues into a cue list over here in functions. So I have my main cues. I have my scenes and everything in here. And then I just, in my virtual console, I have a cue list up. And then I use my show control program software. Let's start this for a minute. I don't have it set up to do this, but there's my first cue. Now I would send a MIDI signal to this button to advance to the next cue. So I just keep sending MIDI signals to advance to the next cue. And that way I don't have any issues with something accidentally going off on me or overlapping because I'm going from scene to scene to scene. And now, again, a little bit more complex because in order to do this, you have to you have to create what we call a MIDI sequence file. And I do have some videos uh, explaining how to do that. Um, a little bit more complex, but I thought I'd just give you that background in case you're interested in it. Um, have any further questions, feel free to email me. I'll put a direct link uh, in the description below where you can contact me if you have any further questions.